In this lesson, we are going to follow on our lesson on functions. Remember that a function is a relation where every input or x value has only one output or y value. And now there's different kinds of functions. Today we're going to look at linear functions. They form a straight line when they're graphed and nonlinear functions. We're going to look at several different things. When you look at a table, how do you tell if the data in the table represents a linear function? Well, it represents linear if it has a constant rate of change. And that means how the y values and x values change from one set of points to the next is constant. Now, let's take a look at this table to help explain this. I'm going to look at how my y value changed from my first set of points to the second. It has a plus 3. I'm adding 3. Okay, so that is my change in the y value. And my change in my x value is 1. So my rate of change is 3 to 1. And if this is linear, the rate of change in all of the rest of these will be the same. So let's take a look at the next one. Okay, here I have a plus 3 and a plus 1. That's 3 to 1 change. Hey, this is looking pretty good here. Let's go to the next one. Ooh, I have a plus 6 and a plus 2. So my y values change by 6. My x values change by 2. So it doesn't look like a constant rate of change. But remember, we always have to reduce fractions. So if I reduce that fraction, it is a 3 to 1 rate of change. And you have to check every set in your table. So this is my y values change at 3, my y value, x values change to 1. So this is a linear table, or this the data in this table represents a linear function because it has a constant rate of change. Let's look at one that does not have a constant rate of change. All right, let's check how our y values are changing, it's 4 over 1. So I'm looking for a rate of change of 4 to 1 on every other um, set of, uh, sorry, of uh, every other ordered pair to make it linear. So let's take a look at the other one. This is 12 over 1. Oh, well, I can't reduce 12 over 1. That's as simple as that gets. So this is not linear because it does not have the same rate of change or a constant rate of change. Now, when you are looking at an equation, and I need you to write this down, you are looking for equations where the highest power in the linear equation is 1. That means anytime you see a variable, it should not have a power. The highest power should be 1. So let's take a look at the first equation and we have here. f of x equals 2x plus 4. f of x is just y, remember, and that has a power of 1. And our x has a power of 1. So this is a linear equation or a linear equation that represents a linear function. And our next one is y equals 1 half x. Well, our y is raised to the first power and our x is raised to the first power. So these are examples of linear equations. Now let's look at ones that are not linear. This one says f of x equals 2x to the third plus 4x minus 3. Well, f of x is y. It has raised to the first power. But when I look at my very first variable, it's raised to the third power. So this is not a linear equation. Looking at the second one, y equals negative x squared. My y is raised to the first power, but my x is raised to the second power. So again, this is not a linear equation. Now, when you're looking at a graph, it's super easy. If it forms a straight line, then it's linear. So this is an example of a linear function. This is an example of nonlinear because it does not form a straight line. It forms a curved line. All right, let's use some of this stuff. Now, I'm going to give you two tables, and I want you to tell me if they represent linear or nonlinear functions. I'm going to ask you questions like this on your unit test. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at how all of my x values change. 
Yep, they all change by one. And then I'm gonna look at how my y values change. Oh, they all change by three. So I have a constant rate of change in this table of three to one. So therefore, this is linear because we have a constant rate of change. Now, let's look at the next table. Again, let's do the same, let's use the same process. Let's see how our x values are changing. I like it when they all change the same. Now let's look at how our y values are changing. Oh man, this is all over the board. One's a negative one, one's a negative two, one's minus four, one's minus eight. So since my x values all change at the same rate, but my y values do not, this is not a linear function because it does not have a constant rate of change. And as I said, you will be seeing things like this on your unit test. All right, what if I give you something like this and I say complete the table to create a linear function? So I'm telling you to fill this table out and make it linear. Well, they've given me two points, so let's figure out what the rate of change is between these two points. Notice that my x values are changing, I'm sorry, my y values are changing by adding five and my x values are changing by adding two. So every time my x goes up by two, my y has to go up by five. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add, since my x values go up by two here, I'm just gonna add five to my y value and get 16. I'm gonna do the same thing going to 10. I'm gonna add five and get 21. Now look at this one. The very first term I'm going backwards, so I had to subtract two. So it makes sense that on the y value, I would have to subtract five. Now, look at the variable. All must be to the first power. Circle all the functions that are linear. Let's look at our first one. Well, I've got two variables, and they're both raised to the first power, so that is linear. Now let's take a look at this next one. I have two values, uh, two variables, and they're both raised to the first power. Yep. yep, that's linear. Let's take a look at this one. I've got two variables, but one is x raised to the second power, so this is not linear. This, I have two variables, um, but my variable in the second term, five raised to the x, that x could be any value, so that is not a function. Now, let's take a look at this one. I've got two variables, but one of them is raised to the third power, so that is not a function. Now, let's take a look at this one. This is kind of an odd one. I actually have two variables here. I have f of, or i of x and x. It's just that Sorry about that. It's just that x is zero, so it doesn't show up on the right side of my equation there. So they're both raised to the first power, and therefore this is linear. This is actually a horizontal line. Let's look at the next one. Two variables, they're both raised to the first power. That's linear. And here, oh, I see a variable raised to the second power. That is not linear. I think that you have the information you need. If you have questions, either rewind the video or make sure and talk with the teacher.